We didn't plan his outfit. No. It looks right. like a German techno band from the 90s. I know, right? Cool. So, welcome, Kenneth. Well, sure, <clears throat> so, you are today an artist on the uh, rise of in the international art scene. You work with excellent galleries in Norway, in Germany, uh, actually in half of the European countries, from what I've understood. You have now a solo show in France and uh, then you work in Switzerland as well, but as well in USA as much as in China. And uh, so tell us instead about your first step in the art world. How were they? What brought you to the art world? <laughs> yeah, I don't think I never think about being into the art world. It's like uh, you work in a studio and you make your brand and a thing and you're trying to understand something and then suddenly it flows around with so many interesting people connected to this. So I don't feel like, oh, I'm really stepping up something now. It's, it's never my thought. It's more like uh, being surrounded by people who are professional, interested in art and uh, makes my goal getting higher and higher. And uh, th the best part of this is actually that as higher you get, understand me right, this word higher, <laughs> the more humor, the more interesting people are, the more relaxed they are, the more into the, really into the spot of the art, it's uh, getting more and more focused. So uh, when it started, I don't know, it little came by uh, the thief during the night, but I think I had never had any ambitions of getting out of Norway as an artist. Never. You don't. So that came by surprise. Uh, maybe I just saw suddenly one day, oh, here's a chance. Here's an open field. Why not try to walk that one instead of following the normal setups and the normal groups of people who decide all the things and just like, I just go. In your painting, the subtle, uh, subtle psychological tension and the latent noir atmosphere are the first things standing out. Uh, uh, what are you saying to the world with it? To the world? Hmm. Uh, to uh, your viewer, to, to your public, to your I, I've collectors. Been a, I've been a teacher sometimes way back and I always told my students, the world doesn't care about your work. Take it easy. I mean, if you think you're painting for the world, do something else. So, point one, I'm not talking to the world, I'm talking to myself. Right. I'm not always. All else would be very arrogant. So, I don't talk to my clients, I don't talk to critics, I don't talk to people at all. Because if I did, they will change their opinion about me all the time. And I have to follow them. And I will go crazy. It's 80s, it's 90s, it's photo, it's painting, it's installations. I mean, who do you think we are? So, I just do my things, and if people like it, it's very nice. If they don't, to be respectful, I don't really care because I don't want to let them decide what I'm going to do. So I don't think art can change the world at all. I think maybe people looking into art can change themselves, reading books, looking, listening to music, whatever. But artists can't change the world. That's a myth. No, can inspire it. I insist that painting still has a very strong platform because if it works, if you take time for a painting, it's a quiet window out from the noise. If you read art history, as we did in Art Academy, study that, you will see that in Titian, Velasquez, whatever, they're all using this kind of compositions with lines uh, transformed into weapons, soldiers, the cross, yes. churches, windows, ladies in the background. It's all based on very hardcore uh, lines and geometrical shapes. So if you take away the action, the persons, all the, the, the things that really attracts us to a classic painting, you will see it's built up very, very strong. And when I was studying in Düsseldorf, I went out to Krefeld and saw these uh, houses from Mies van der Rohe, mm -hmm. three private villages, uh, villages uh, made uh, by him. And they have Yves Klein showing in that um, private villas. And then I saw how a shape empty space, very minimalistic uh, room could make focus for a painting. And then I thought if I, you know, really just being very serious about making these lines clear and empty room, my persons could walk around and have more space to have this kind of drama I'm trying to make. I remember perfectly the first time I saw one of your paintings and I was like, oh, this guy gets me, this guy understands me, you know, he's just like, uh, 
<laughs> yes, I'm not the only freak alone, you know. <laughs> and and uh, what is actually behind the, uh, the choice of the subject that you put in your... Is there a choice that you make? Is it an active decision or is more an instinctive flow? Uh, work. The motives I choose, or the persons the person, I choose, the, the person. No, no. Uh, the, inside, yeah. why are like... uh, they could be anyone. I mean, the person is not important. They can be from any time, timeless, or from the 80s. I don't really care. No. Uh, but uh, I use more these persons as symbols, like a marionette theater in a way. Mm -hmm. I just use them to get a feeling started. Uh, I was in, uh, in the 90s studying in Oslo Art Academy and we went to this big show in Copenhagen. And the, the project in that show was to make, uh, um, showing how animals was uh, having pain during um, food production, etc, etc, etc. So they had this kind of awful installation with the snakes with the video camera on and some hot lamps to show how awful people could be against animals. And I was really throwing up. And then I thought, if this is art, I don't know what art is. I was just like, I was 19. After that, we went up north in Denmark to this old um, little village where they have this kind of old museum for folk art. And all my friends were down to the beach to have party. And I went into that museum. And I just felt in love with this, <laughs> with these romantic paintings with a fisherwoman sitting in the beach with a red house in the behind. And I thought, wow. He was in Copenhagen and you threw up and here you're quiet and you it, it really touched you. And then I thought, if you start to fake with your feelings, looking at art now, you will not understand what it is to make art. So since that, I've been insisting on, for me, that in that kind of boring stage, with this fisherwoman, classical kid sitting there, there you can really make something out of it because it's so obvious, it's so banal, but in that shape in that canvas, thing can happen for me. So I insist since that time, 1989, to keep on working with my persons. And I know it's kind of balanced between falling down to be like life and death, blah, 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 blah. But that's why I'm attracted to it, because in that scene, it's so many possibilities. And then I had to be gifted, clear, academic, etc. In your painting, I personally see a research for an escape toward a next reality, a new evolution, a new step of life. This is only me, or is actually mm. something that you feel? Uh, no, interesting to hear that you say that because painting should have a story which continues with you as an audience. Yes, of so course. I haven't put that into my painting, but when I say that, I can see that that's a possibility. But for me, I try to put down the symbol as much as I can because I need to make a good painting. And if I get too obsessed about the symbol of the guy running away from his life, etc., I will follow for the, for the symbol in art instead of making good painting. Let's talk a little bit about the water. Mm -hmm. so you, we, we find again in your images uh, uh, the swimming pools, of course, immediately comes up to mind uh, the, the painting uh, from Hockney with his women. Who is that? Hock. Hockney. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was like, you don't know David Hockney. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> no, I mean, I like his answer when he said that, flew over LA and why do you paint pool? I like them. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's a very intelligent man, very gifted, one of the biggest artists living now. Of course, he had a bigger plan be beside that answer, but that's what he could say. Uh, for me, pool is, Point one, it's a beautiful square to make a kind of um, uh, solution for the canvas, for the composition in a, in, a, in a painting. It's a nice square to just put people around because they give them some place to breathe and some more control what you're doing. At the same time, pools are for me like kind of sad place, I don't know why. I don't know why, it's, it's, it's a happiness, it's kids in the summer, it's the sounds, but in the evening when it's all closed down, it's this blue, beautiful square left for people. I think it's something, yeah, it is, it's, it is. Lost happiness, it's a symbol of happiness, symbol of wealth, something like that. So it's a strong symbol, but mostly it's because the possibility to get some mirroring, to get some double figures and to get some more drama. Of course, we are all inspired. And if you think you're making jazz music without belonging to our history, you're 
moron. You are belonging to history anyway what you do, if you make food or if you make clothes or if you make paintings. So I'm, I'm in a long, long chain from art history. Yes, Back to what you started to talk about, I'm not making art. I don't want to change the world. I'm just trying to make a handcraft. I'm serious now. Mm -hmm. Handcraft. I'm trying to understand what I'm doing. I'm putting this art world very, very low down and just try to go every day and try to figure out a new taste like mm -hmm. a chef. But I think if you really want to get into this deep, deep level, you have to close your eyes for everything around you and don't think about the, if you have something on your heart. If you have it, you have it. If not, it doesn't matter. You can paint until 95 and you hope you have something. Mm. Forget about it. So thank you so much for uh, being here with us. Uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, thank you, Luisa. Supporting me in this uh, lovely... You're supporting me. Thank, thank you for giving me the chance. This, uh, yeah, yeah. journey and yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, we can die now. Adios. Uh.